Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and very good evening. I hope all of you are doing well. Right. What we are going to do tonight, um, basically I'm going to share with you the uh, tools that I have promised in our previous uh, lecture that we are going to have a uh, best practices. Eh? So, right. so the tool that I'm going to share with you, um, it is just one of the tools that are being used by researchers, especially in uh, UPM, in uh, some of the researchers from MMU, Uni10, and, uh, and um, quite a, quite a uh, widespread uh, practices already. Eh? It's already been used uh, for quite some time, probably uh, five to eight years. Right. Before we go any further, um, this is just a scenario. Um, similarly, what you are facing right now, where you are a master student and you just started your graduate study and you are looking for your title. Title means your project title. And of course, uh, at any time, your supervisor is always busy. Okay. So, um, but um, that is a, the normal scenario. Whenever you want to see your supervisor, you walk in into the, their room, they say they are busy, please come back later and then they want if you want to uh, make an appointment he, he or she will just try to uh, not try to avoid you but of course they are also having other other things to do eh? apart from supervising you they are also doing teaching they are doing uh, research they are doing administration job and other things um, this is just a, a cartoon from phd comics eh? How to read a professor's door? Probably a um, bit un unlucky for all of you. Okay, for those who just started uh, doing their uh, graduate studies, and uh, we are only having a, an online session. All right. So, so for example, like uh, the door is fully closed. Um, I may or may not be on this continent, meaning that maybe the supervisors or the professor is not around at all. Eh? Even though probably his inside means that uh, it's a no go for you. Okay, and if it is half open, I'm probably in a meeting. Okay, maybe there's someone inside there, uh, another student or another lecturer, a colleague. Or if it is wide open, uh, the supervisor probably just walk in uh, to get few things before he or she need to run for another meeting. Okay, um, if it is just slightly open, you may proceed with caution. Eh? So this is uh, just a, a scenario, right? Um, um, another scenario, uh, probably you are now having, okay, you pick up and photocopy or download all every single article you, you come across. Yeah? You, find to, if you find it hard to finish them. So you just collect and collect and collect. You put so many folders, uh, so many um, probably snapshots of photos and so on it is uh, basically you're going to be swarmed with all the information you need help right and then another scenario even when you do finish the article you do finish reading the article you may get confused more than before means that you don't know what to get from the paper right? so you keep asking yourself what exactly am i working on okay how much should i read how much is enough and how do I get a novelty? Some student uh, after year one, year two doing, uh, especially by research, eh, some, some of a PhD student, even for after five years, they still cannot get the skill of reading papers. Eh? So it's quite, quite tough actually, right? But there is a way to overcome it. Another scenario, Okay, um, this is a, a, a situation where you yourself becoming a researcher. Eh? Just now is a, a, when you are a graduate student. So as a researcher, you are about to embark on a research project. You face a hard time identifying the scope of research and specific problem to solve. You're also planning to have a co-researchers or you have your own students, but organizing and coordinating them are not a piece of cake. For example, I have um, I think more than 15 students eh, 
uh, PhD as well as uh, masters, masters by research. At the same time, I also have uh, master by course eh? uh, student, uh, and at the same time, also having um, undergraduate students under my supervision. So, so many, so many people to manage. Eh? They, they different work, different projects. Eh? You want them to work together, not to scream at each other. Eh? You, you ask yourself, who will do what? Okay, and how much one particular student or one co particular core researcher need to do? how many sub-projects can be created and how to maximize the output and how to produce more outcome in terms of papers. So these are scenarios. Eh? Maybe there are more things that need to be managed. A question in research planning. Normally, uh, people will ask what is the specific title of the study, right? Probably later for those who are doing their Part A dissertation, they are now... Uh, struggle, uh, try to find what is the specific title of the study and then how to identify the problems to study. Okay, you want to find what is the, actually the problem statement? What actually worth for a project? Okay, how wide or deep is the study? Whether you are going to go deep in one particular, particular point or you want to go uh, very, very broad, okay? And how much is the literature review? Okay, is it enough 30 citation or references or you need 300 references? Okay, and what do I look for in reading reference papers? And maybe some of you have already experienced uh, having trouble with that. And how do I choose between two or more design options? Right, and the question does not stop there. How do you organize your study? Should you focus on just doing theory or doing simulation? Or you end up doing experiment, for example, right? How many results should you get? Okay, is it just one result from simulation is enough? Or you need to do uh, um, different uh, parameters to get more results? Okay, how do you know that your results are correct and sufficient. Do you need to do comparison? Do you need to do benchmarking? How do you validate your result? And how do you verify your results? Eh? So what if I cannot get the target result? Let's say you start with one aim or few objectives and suddenly halfway around your study, you still cannot get your result. What you need to do, right? And how to arrange these results when you already obtained them and probably Another question, how to cluster for sub-project. These are among questions. The questions that I throw here are not just limited to this. There are so many other questions will arise or will, will be uh, come out. It will come out whenever you want to embark on a research journey. And then we look at the dilemma, right? The reason why I throw all of this so that you are aware, so that you are not being caught unready eh? so so let's let let's see how to overcome all of this eh? many new researchers and graduate students do not have structured guides for research planning or monitoring uh, good research should have macro and micro level planning monitoring macro means activities and timelines in general micro you are looking at the scope of issues okay and under studies, so probably I can just use uh, some pen there so that we can, so you can see that this is a macro level and micro level, right? It is uh, uh, very important to ensure that these two items in terms of the activity, the timeline, this uh, SUS, the scope under study, we will use this terminology uh, so many times in this subject, SUS is scope under study, <coughs> and we have the methodology as well as the result. How do you determine the results? Eh? Existing tool do not support micro level research planning, right? So do, today in our um, uh, best practice, I will share with you how a particular tool can uh, manage micro level research planning, which is called the K chart. Probably some of you may heard about it, maybe this is the first time you heard about K-chart. 
that is able to provide the solution, right? In terms of micro level research planning and monitoring, All right? Let us move on. Existing tools. Eh? So, um, as a student, probably, or you are being, you are, you already use your, uh, you are doing research in uh, your workplace, or you are doing some uh, study before. Probably in your undergraduate, you may already familiar with the term flowchart. Eh? You have a flowchart. Of course, you have a gun chart. You have a project management work. You have gun chart, and maybe some of you already familiar with the term Six Sigma, eh? DMAIC. What is DMAIC? So, existing tools, what we have known uh, before, it is too specific in function, and there are some cases it is too broad. Eh? Let me uh, share with you um, what I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. Eh, in terms of the existing of uh, existing tools, in terms of the flowchart, this is a typical example where where you have a oops, um, sorry about that. Let me just go back. Okay, where you normally have um, um, a start. Okay, you have a start. You start um, terminator. You have several processors, and you have a decision box. Okay, and then uh, whether uh, if it is uh, no, you may go to uh, may, maybe you 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 can go to N, okay, or you can uh, have other uh, probably it can be go back into here or depends. Eh? And if it is a yes, yes, you collect more data, you analyze data, you document it, um, put it on a, a report or whatsoever, and you have you end your 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 tasks. Eh? This is a, a typical flow chart, right? It can be as simple as just one way or you can have a few loops for a decision, okay? But can it answer the questions that we have thrown just now, okay? The, the 13 so-called questions on research, okay? Research planning, right? Can it, can it answer? Which probably not, eh? because it's not the, uh, the purpose is not to have, uh, to answer the questions. And then uh, we have another tool that you normally use, right? So you may uh, have uh, like a gun chart, okay? Like uh, uh, where it has a uh, months over here, okay? So you have months. You have the activities down here, okay? Activities, right? And then you have the, what you call it as the uh, milestone. Eh? So a typical milestone, milestone. Okay, green is not that, that good color eh? to, to view, right? So um, this is also, when you use gun chart, you won't be able to answer many of the question that I have thrown just now. Eh? So because it's just look at the general, the, the macro, macro level, not the micro level. Right? Let us move on. Uh, existing tools like Six Sigma, DMAIC. What is DMAIC? Eh? So over here, okay, let me just find a more appropriate color. Maybe red would be good. Okay where if you uh, look D, okay, D stand for define the project goals and customer, internal or external deliverables, right? And then you have uh, measure, measure the process to determine current performance and quantify the problem. And then you analyze it and determine the root cause of the problems. Okay, I improve the process by eliminating defects and finally C, control future process performance. So improved process does not degrade. So it may answer a few, but it does not, it is not comprehensive enough to answer the issues related to research planning and management. Okay, so let us move on. Um, meaning that we can say that at the, at the moment, the current tools, that are available in the market or available in the literature are not good enough to cover 
to to be a comprehensive uh, research tool for planning and management. Whenever you do research, okay, you will be uh, having um, issues. Eh? The issues in the, the the issues in research eh? that include um, system problems, achievement, and the method. Okay, what we call it as the the spam eh? spam main issues in research. System under study, the, start, the, the system that you are focusing or you are studying, right? The, the items, eh? problems, P, problems to be solved, achievement, achievement in solving the problems, and M for method used to achieve the solution that can be any methodology that you are using, right? So these are the main issues in research, research that you want to find a tool that can cover all of these items. And then, as I said just now, K-chart may be suitable for you in order for you to um, uh, address the issues in research. What is K-chart? Eh? So it is just a, a tool to help establish the SPAM, right? The subject under study, the problem, the achievement, and the, and the method. And by, 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 by doing what? By systematically organizing these items, right? This item in term of the scope of study, right? The scope of study, problems under research, the methodology, results, and timeline, right? So you imagine one tool that can uh, help you to uh, resolve many things in the research, eh? especially that is related to the spam. Okay, so how does it look like? It is in the form of a tree diagram, right? So not like a tree like this, okay? But a tree diagram, okay? You have uh, like that, okay? Probably some of you have already used this many times like a, an organization structure, okay? And through the process of zoom and expand. Later, I will explain to you how to zoom and expand the tree eh? with, of course, with specific rules. It's not just uh, simply follow, follow, follow through the, the tree like that, but it is uh, having a specific rules. Okay? That is, uh, but before that, probably it's best for me to highlight who is the in inventor or innovator of the K-chart. It is actually the late Professor uh, Muhammad Khazani Abdullah. Basically, he's a, a, like a mentor to me, right? He's uh, used to be working in uh, the Department of Computer uh, and Communication Engineering at University Putra, Malaysia. And um, basically, he's uh, the recipient of the National Young Scientist Award in 2001 and won many awards. Uh, he's a renowned uh, scientist in uh, fiber optics, okay, and uh, before he left uh, UPM in 2000, I believe it's 2007, right, and then um, he started up uh, his own company and uh, tried to introduce K-Chart eh, uh, way back in 2007, 2008, and then, um, but um, unfortunately, he, he died quite young. Um, he passed away in 2017, right? But uh, nevertheless, uh, the knowledge that uh, he uh, imparted to the students, to colleagues, um, and now I'm following the legacy, okay? Trying to also embark uh, the, uh, the knowledge on K-chart to all of you. Look at the general structure of a K-chart. How to construct a K-chart. Later, you are going to construct your own K-chart on your own topic of interest, right? So basically, a K-chart will consist of three main uh, components, the scope, the methodology, and the results uh, layer. We call these layers, eh? scope layers, methodology layers, and result layers. And we, when we talk about scope, we talk about general topic 
okay we have the first layer the the the, the overarching the the, the 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 top layer is the general topic eh? where you have uh, for example like study of the performance of a b and c okay and then you have the under the scope layer you have the system okay the system for example like abc system and then type 1 for abc you may have type 1 abc type 2 and type 3 and then you have another layer of a subsystem type 2 application 1 application 2 application 3 or 4 and you may have 5 6 7 and and, and so on right and then uh, you may also have subsystem elements okay a b and c depending on how deep you are going to go through and you may also have sub issues um, you may have b1 b2 b3 this is just a general generic uh, structure of a k chart eh? and all of this the first layer that i'm uh, putting it here is the scope layer it is known as the scope layer you may have five sub layer you may have only two or three the more layers that you have the better your literature review will be okay i will relate that later on when we see an example then let us continue with the methodology layer what is methodology layer let's say you've chosen uh, sub issues b3 to to be focused eh? you have methodology such as the theory you may have experiment you may conduct simulation or you may end up to do survey right and this is what we call methodology you we may have more methodology we may have few methodology right it depends on the topic that you are studying and then we move into the results layer where we have the performance parameter whenever you do um, uh, science and technology uh, study or even social science study you will have a parameters called the performance parameters you may have performance parameter one you may have performance parameter two and so on eh? and then we will have the design parameters performance parameters is the outcome right where the design parameters are the, the parameters that you play around where you change eh? you change uh, the dimension you change the parameters here and that that resulted to the uh, will affect the uh, performance parameters okay you may have dp1 design parameter one design parameter two three and so on okay these are we call the results uh, layer okay so if you may maybe some of you um asking okay what is why is it that the middle um boxes are, are being highlighted in purple okay actually this shows that this particular study right it is study of a performance of abc which focus on type 2 in the application of number 2 in the subsystem of b and sub issues of b3 using methodology which is experiment looking at the performance parameter p2 and pp3 that looks into the design parameter dp1 2 and 3 right that is what we mean by the uh, purple uh, shaded area it means also the rest of the other areas may be uh, allocated or may be focused by other students or are not in the scope of the study right maybe some of you are, are having question but leave your question later on so that we I just tell you what is the uh, general um, um, overview of the K-chart first, right? You may say that, okay, uh, we know already uh, we have um, the K-chart and what are the benefits, okay? The benefits, for example, like it can help you to identify the scope of the study. Remember just now, the, 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 the three, yeah? you, you may... Uh, uh, say that oh uh, my scope is only on experiments i don't do numerical my scope is only 
focus on certain parameters, design parameters, not the other one. Okay, it can also be a guide for literature review. It will direct reading by knowing what you do not know. Okay, so you may say that the the for example at the uh, scope layer just now, eh, the system, how many layers that you want to go into, eh, whether is it only five or you need more than five layers. Eh? The more layers that you have, as I said just now, the better the literature review will be. Eh? It is also a guide in choosing the main issues under study. So the SUS, okay, system under study. It will distinguish the focus issues from any complementary ones and engage the level of quality of the research project thus the potential for novelties and publication it will also identify the level of assumptions whenever you jump from one layer to another layer means you are making assumption there are no more uh, horizontal items okay you go then you jump to another layer it will also help you to establish the problems, okay, the problem statement and establish the objective of the research, okay. K-chart also will help you to identify the methodology and finally identify how many results that you, you can produce based on the numbers of the design parameters versus the performance parameters. So the performance parameters versus the design parameters, okay? Right. More benefits, it also guide to attain quality research, okay? In our previous uh, lecture, we have already looked into how to determine a quality research, right? If you still remember, eh? Uh, what is quality research all about? Is it um, uh, the high Im high impact as well as high uh, quality in quality output and quality input eh, through the selection criteria? Okay, and it distinguishes research projects from development project. Remember, when we look into the le the the levels of research. We have fundamental research, we have applied research, we have prototype research, and so on. Eh? So it depends on the technology readiness level, TRL. Okay, Maybe later I will share with you what is TRL all about. Eh? And then distinguish pure fundamental research from pure applied research. And eh? the more fundamental research, the more general or wider the scope layer will be. Right? Let us uh, move on. Okay, let us look back on the question that we have thrown before. Eh? What, in terms of, uh, try to answer this question again. What is a specific title of study? With K-chart, you would be able to answer that. How to identify the problem? Yes, with K-chart, you can identify the problem to study. How wide or deep in the study? Yes, we can identify the, the broad, the breadth, and the depth of the study by having more layers in the in the system, right? How much literature review? Okay, yes, you can determine the numbers of literature review that you need to consider. What do you look for in reading papers? Okay, how do you choose design option? How do you organize your study? Should you focus on theory or simulation? This is the methodology, okay? methodology okay and how many results should you get of course you will immediately know how many results how do you know whether the results are correct and sufficient when you do comparison with others eh? what if i cannot get the target result you may jump to another solution in the k-chart eh? and how to arrange result how to cluster for sub project easily can be done in k-chart so that's why i said uh, using K-chart with the help of other tools like Gun chart, flow chart, and maybe Six Sigma, it is uh, complementary. It is complementing the 
research tools for planning and management. Okay. And at the same time, KChart also help you to plan for publication. You can plan the results by having the results. You can then plan how many papers are you going to publish. Okay? How to construct article title. Later, you're going to write general title. You're going to, let me just uh, try to write it down. Okay. Over here is basically how to construct a the general title okay and then you may have like your uh, specific title okay and of course your your paper title right by having uh, by using kchart you can then construct all of this okay? how to organize report structure how to plan Graduate thesis writing, for example, that you are going to write your dissertation, how KChart can help you to organize your thesis writing. How to integrate with new ideas? Yes, by having KChart around, you may end up that knowing that, oh, this is not being done before. This has been done before. This is novel and this is not novel. Eh? And how to re realign the area of research when the original plan does not work. So you may manipulate, you may reiterate K-chart so that you can uh, be on the right track, okay? Okay, this is a K-chart sample, right? Just now, we have only, we have looked at the uh, general, okay? Let us uh, try to look uh, uh, more uh, example, this is just an example, uh, example on motor vehicle, right? So, um, obviously, it has the scope layer, it has the methodology layer, and it has the result layer. Let us go one by one. Uh, for example, like the general title for this particular uh, research is factors influencing the performance of motor vehicles, right? So general titles is like that. What are the factors? We don't know yet. What are the performance? We also don't know yet. But the system under study, okay, let me just uh, select a, a pen. Maybe a bit would be good, okay. So uh, the if you look the title, okay, the title, this is the system under study, SUS, which is a, the motor vehicle, okay. And this is the performance. We don't know yet the, what is the performance parameters. And then we are looking at the factors, okay? The, the, the design parameters. Let us see one by one. Looking at the system, the, the top one is vehicle, okay? Of course, when we talk about vehicles, it can be air vehicle, it can be land vehicle, it can be sea vehicle, it can be maybe space vehicle and so on, right? But this particular researcher choose only land vehicle. They just ignore, they just ignore air vehicle and sea vehicle. They just focus on land vehicle. What are the land vehicles available? So you can have motorcycle, you can have cars, you can have trucks, vans, and so on, right? So, but they only uh, focus on cars, right? Of course. When you jump from one layer, when you jump from here to here, you are assuming there are no more, there are no more horizontal. Okay, there's the, it is already, uh, you don't have any, any ideas anymore. Okay, you, then you jump to the, the following layers. For example, like cars, right? Eh? It has can be considered as uh, mini car, sedan, wagon, maybe uh, convertible, and so on. So we don't know. Eh? So, and let's say you can, you 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 only found find three type of cars, right? Obviously there are more, eh? but you assume there are only three in your literature review. When you discuss uh, each of these, you it let's say. Uh, the layer number one, 
you discuss about the uh, vehicle in general in one paragraph. And then you move into the second paragraph, you discuss about the uh, type of uh, land vehicle. Okay, this is the second paragraph. The third paragraph, you talk about the uh, type of cars available. And then, then you focus on the subsystem. Then you want to look into sedan, car. What are the subsystem? You can look at the engine, the body, the tire, okay? Uh, but uh, this particular person focus on the tire, right? They don't focus on the body or the engine or the entertainment in the car. Then that we call it as the um, scope layer. Okay? You may have you may have more layers. Uh, if I can say that if in, in this particular uh, storyboard, okay, you have four paragraph already uh, to help you to write your literature, okay. And each one of these, for example, you may divide it into smaller section, okay. Maybe uh, one paragraph talking about air vehicle, one paragraph talking about land vehicle, one paragraph talking about sea vehicle, okay. That is under the subsection of vehicles, and you may continue, okay. Later, when I sh I will sh share with you. Um, uh, a good example of my very own literature review paper that uh, you may see that, oh, this is what uh, Prof. Rahim uh, mentioned when we talk on the scope of the study. Eh? And then we move on to the methodology. Okay, of course, um, in this particular student, they choose experiment. That does not mean that nobody... Um, focuses on the other methodology, okay? You have to mention what are the methodologies that are available and whether there are people already uh, conducting work on each one of the methodology, okay? And then uh, data collection analysis, whether it is a lab test or a field test and is it a lab prototype Okay, it is not engineering prototype, not commercial prototype. And then we have the uh, measurement techniques. Eh? So many measurement techniques, but we don't, we don't uh, specify it here. Okay, measurement technique number one, measurement technique number two. Okay, right. And then uh, the results, eh? the performance parameter, the PP, and the design parameter, the DP. Eh? So for example, when you talk about performance of cars, you refer back at, at the performance of cars, okay, it can be acceleration, okay. You talk about speed, you talk about fuel consumption, right? That are we consider the performance of car. Right? So, um, in this particular case, uh, the research only consider speed and fuel consumption, not about acceleration. What are the design parameters? Since we are focusing on the tire, okay. How can you change the tire to if to, to, to effect to bring effect to the speed and fuel consumption? Probably pressure of the air, the tire height, the tire width, the tire pressure, okay, or the design. Maybe there are uh, the tire design, eh? the, the design of the thread. Okay, it depends. Eh? So you can have another one there, right? And um, this particular student chose all of them. Okay? So you can see here, these are an example of how to construct a K-chart. Okay? Later, you are going to do your own K-chart, right? But before we go any further, let us look into a more uh, simpli simplified um, items. Okay? In general, these are what I have shown just now, okay. In terms of the uh, general title, you have the scope, subsystem, subsystem one, subsystem two, right? And basically, um, this uh, is actually the, um, the chapter number one, okay? chapter number one, which include the introduction as well as chapter number two that include your literature review, right? So for those who are doing part A dissertation, you focus on doing the scope, right? 
identify what is the general title, identify the system, right? And how many system that you have that will end up at the end of the semester, you should be able to produce chapter one and chapter two, okay? And then to continue, uh, we have the methodology, the data collection, when you have chosen different type of methodology, you can then write your chapter three, which is the methodology. And finally, when you go into your uh, part B dissertation, you can produce your results by already identifying the performance parameters as well as the design parameter. These are the section where you um, uh, discuss on the results, analyze the results and discuss the, do the discussion and, and make conclusion, okay? And you over here, you can see how many results and papers can be generated by simply saying that, oh, in one paper, you may want to report only performance parameter one and uh, performance parameter one, looking at the design parameter one and two, okay? And another paper may uh, discuss on performance parameter number two and number three, looking at different design parameter three, okay? So, as I said just now, uh, this is uh, K-Chart can organize your research. K-Chart can help to, uh, for you to do the planning, right? And uh, just to summarize again, in terms of the K-Chart, it has the general title, the scope, methodology, and results, which is the problem that you want to resolve. Eh? And we can also put timeline in K-Chart, right? I would like to stop there, okay? Because uh, probably um, it's best to do one by one, okay? Later, in I will continue in terms of giving the steps and eh? constructing the general title. Uh, we are going to look into constructing the system under study layers, constructing the methodology layers, and constructing the result layers. The timeline, it is uh, basically once you have one, two, three, and four, you can easily put up the, the timeline, okay? So I would like you to um, identify at the moment for those who are already doing part A, you probably try to look back at the uh, video that I'm going to upload later on, on the general overview of K-chart okay and try to um, identify eh? for those who are not doing part a dissertation also you need to identify a topic of interest probably dr faisal the coordinator already allocate you with some uh, supervi potential supervisors okay you may have a potential project that you would like to uh, take it as a, an example eh? so uh, later, we will uh, try to construct uh, the general title and then uh, we will move on to the num step number two, three, four, and five. Okay, with that, I would like to stop at the moment um, and we would like, I would like to open for uh, discussion. If you have any questions so far, you may ask and um, I'll try to answer as best as possible. Yes, anyone? Assalamualaikum, Doctor. Waalaikumsalam, Arif. Yes, Arif here. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to ask, like, uh, basically, the basic idea of K-chart is more like uh, narrowing down our scope of study, is it? Yes, it is uh, trying to put the boundary, the scope of what you want to do, eh? uh, in terms of, uh, so that you know immediately whenever you want to embark in a research you know immediately these are the boundary of my research so okay. in that sense whenever we do our literature readings i mean like when we search for research papers and do our surveys yep. in those cases uh like for instance uh if for me personally when uh, when i when i do my uh degree final year project previously mm -hmm. what it is was we just focus more on what we are going to do rather than those boundaries, meaning like 
we focus more on finding the research pa- the research papers previously which which uh, actually connected or which is related to our job so to our scope of study rather yep. than finding those outside of the scope of the study so in that sense is my approach much better is my approach uh, previously much better or uh, is it better for me to follow the key chart meaning it's better to widen the scopes and then from there just go narrow down narrow it down narrow it down uh, layer by layer Yes, actually, this is just a, a, a method. As I said, this is just a best practice. There are so many other methods that uh, people are using and and uh, you may want to use your own method. If it is structured enough, by all means, use it. Okay, as I said, this is just a, a, a best practice that already been uh, practiced with, uh, by many, many renowned researchers. Eh? So it is... It is uh, structured in a way and I found that it will be very helpful if you are uh, trying to uh, start your graduate studies. Of course, maybe in your undergraduate, you are being fully guided by your supervisor, right? You have to do this A, B, C and D and then write a result. But in a postgraduate, you don't have that, okay? As a first slide, I, as I shown you just now, your supervisor are very busy. He or she are super busy, right? And you imagine that uh, you are on your own. You postgraduate study mean that you are independent. You have to do. You need some some uh, someone to guide you by 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 using KChart. Um, and many of my students uh, are already use it and they are very successful because they they. Uh, because KChart is not just cast in stone, okay? It is evolving from your beginning of your research until at the end of your PhD, you will evolve your KChart. You, you, it is a live KChart. It's not uh, a, a chart that you make and then just throw it away, okay? Because it is live where you use it to, to determine the result, the parameters, and as a supervisor's, um, I have a, a, a general K chart that have many students working on different pockets of, of uh, research. So um, it depends. Um, I, I, I suggest you to use K chart if you would like to use other, other tools, by all means, you may use it. You can just use a flow chart or you can just use a, use a gun chart and, uh, and then try to do your research. This is, this is a, a tool for planning and management, right? Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, no, no worry. Any other question? Prof. Um, oh, yes, Papati. Uh, could, I, I like the K-chart uh, method. Uh, I think it's going to help us a lot in our dissertation. Um, when it comes to title, can we not uh, look at the title? Uh, we do the scope, uh, narrow down the scope, and then maybe as we go along, then we do the title, or do we have to have a general title? Um, yes, okay. Example, um, when we discuss about the Part A dissertation, right? We, the general title uh, is Vertical Farming. Right, that is a general title, but um, what is vertical farming? You you don't know yet, and then we may um, uh, come up with another another title more specific for maybe for Visna uh, design and development of plant bedding uh, application for vertical farming. So it's already more specific, okay? But it's not good enough for paper title. Right, paper title you go more specific, uh, and then it maybe have uh, performance parameters or design parameters or a specific plan you want to just to for for tomato or for for spinach for so you 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 go more specific. That is uh, because later I will guide you how to write uh, a general title, how to write. A specific title and how to write a paper title. Okay, so so the the, the by using KCHA. Okay, 
So, uh, but for the time being, I want all of you to identify a topic of interest. Okay, for those who are doing part A dissertation, you don't have you don't have any choice anymore. You have to focus or you have to use the title that already being discussed with the respective supervisors. For the rest, uh, students, okay, you may come up with your own um, general title. Like example, just now I gave you a uh, motor vehicle, okay? So what do you want to do? Or you want to do about, uh, I leave it to you, okay? <laughs> I can give many examples, but I want you to start thinking, identify what are the the topic of interest that you want to to study and uh, try to use it um, as a case study for research methodology class. Okay, any other question? Uh, professor. Yes, Ari, yeah. Can I have uh, one more question? No, no, yes, uh, yes, please. Uh, so in that sense, it's better for us to actually widen our scope at in the first place, meaning like for instance, I am doing a project and then uh, I wanted to fix the water issue in Selangor, for instance. Okay. So in that Very sense, interesting topic. Do I, uh, do, uh, what's the first steps that I'm supposed to do? I mean, like, what's the first step? What's the most general view that I'm supposed to take? Uh, for instance, in that case. You are, you, are, you are saying that you want to, the problem is about water, right? Yeah. Water issues, right? Water, yep. water contamination. Water contamination. So you may, you don't have to start where water coming from. You may, you may start uh, immediately at uh, sources of water contamination. It can be from where? It can be from uh, underground water. It can be coming from uh, pollution from factories. So you go horizontal first and try to be exhaustive before you go to uh, choose the, the layers. For example, you want to focus only from uh, uh, what? I'm, I'm not good in, in uh, water pollution. <laughs> so, so you have to think about horizontal first and then before you go uh, once you uh, exhaust uh, in terms of your ideas uh, horizontally, you may jump into your, your, your second layer, okay? And then choose which one you want to uh, focus and then before you jump into another layer. So, uh, it, it is a good, it, it is a, a interesting uh, topic to start uh, with and then um, you try to do the investigation because Whenever you talk about uh, discuss uh, an item in the in in one layer, you may end up to come out. For example, maybe one uh, we go back into the example that I gave you just now, a car vehicle, right? So a a, a sedan car, uh, probably there are many patterns, many journal article related to a sedan car performance. Maybe there are. Uh, maybe very few uh, peop, um, uh, papers related to a, a wagon car because it's not popular, right? So, so you, um, you each time you want to jump from one layer to another layer, you are making assumption that the the discussion about those uh, type of cars has been discussed exhaustively. You have reported that. Uh, uh, so many people have done this, so many people have um, um, discussed that and in, a, in, in summary, uh, this is very interested in, interesting to see the comparison between uh, one uh, item to another item and then you move on to the second layer. So, uh, at the moment, try to find a general uh, topic of interest and then we move on, okay? So at the end of the day, you should be able to come out with a literature review paper, okay? Thank you, Professor. Yes, yeah. Martin, any question, Martin? No, Prof, clear. Uh, okay. I think the Gantt chart or the key chart is very useful for our dissertation. Okay, good.
So you are, I hope you guys can uh, try to uh, at least uh, as an activity, as a homework, okay? Uh, try to find a title, try to find a topic of interest and maybe you want to re-look back at the example that I, ha I gave you just now. Yes, uh, I think I chose a car a motor vehicle because everybody at least own a car or have used a car before or you have seen a car before. <laughs> if I choose a, something uh, very complex, uh, maybe it's not suitable for any everybody. Eh? So um, with that, uh, if there's, there's no question, I want to uh, relieve you quite early oh. today. Yes. One more. Okay. Um. Yes, Papati. I remember my uh, bachelor uh, thesis. I included uh, flowchart, but yeah. uh, do we also include K chart in our dissertation, or is uh, it for okay? Our yes. Um, actually, uh, normally in a thesis, you will have uh, flowchart, methodology chart, right? Yes. You will also have a gun chart. So this is another chart that would be helpful and 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 uh, helpful in such way um, you can include your k chart inside your thesis so but it's not compulsory k chart is a live uh, chart that you use to do the project management but but there are there are students who include their um, uh, k chart in the methodology section so it clearly stated that in terms of the scope, the methodology, and the results that they are going to have. It's just a big summary. Eh? So K-chart is basically, it's not just literature review, it's not just methodology, it's not just result. It is the whole thing. It's, it is the whole thesis. So uh, there are students who put their K-chart at the appendix because it, it is not, it is the whole, the whole thing. It's just a summary. Question. Yes, surprise okay. yeah. Uh, so how can we determine the best methodology for our uh, project? So there are theory, oh, okay. experiments, simulations to be. So in, in our program, we have to uh, create a product, a project. So which one is the best methodology? Um, it depends uh, on uh, the topic. Eh? For example, like just now, Arif, uh, suggested uh, he would like to do something to do on the uh, water pollution. I can confirm that he's not going to do experiment to do um, um, or probably he's going to end up to do survey okay? or um, it, uh, in terms of uh, uh, choosing the best methodology, basically it will depend on the literature review, the scope layer. Meaning that uh, in the area of interest, maybe some people, maybe many people are just doing numerical analysis, right? So, and uh, you may end up to say that, okay, it's about time to see whether it is uh, the same result can be obtained using experiment, right? But it also depends on so many things. When, you, when we come into the uh, design of uh, experiments um, uh, topic, uh, we will have we will go through in terms of the factors that will determine whether uh, a particular methodology is best for your um, study. It's not the thing that you want to do. For example, like I I think I'm good in doing numerical analysis, right? But suddenly, you do not have the facility to run the, the simulation. You do not have the license. You do not, uh, and uh, uh, many other people has done the simulation. So your supervisor said, okay, Safraza, you, you are not going to do simulation even though you are very good in doing simulation. You are going to do experiment. Okay, so it depends. So. Uh, there are there are factors that need to be considered, maybe uh, funding, maybe uh, ecosystem, maybe other result from other people. So that will determine whether uh, you are going to do uh, a methodology 
or you're going to do another methodology, right? So it's not, it's, it, it depends on the situation and there are other factors that we need to look at before we decide this is the best methodology that we are going to do. Okay, similarly with um, uh, about uh, whether you are going to do just um, what we call it as the uh, conceptual design. Yeah? Is it that you just uh, do conceptual design and, uh, and then proof of concept, um, whether you are going to uh, produce a prototype, lab prototype, okay? And or you just uh, do a simulation that can also uh, prove the concept. So um, it, it depends on the situation. Ah, yes, sir. I'm still here, sir. Okay, okay. Any question? Uh, no, sir. Actually, I have a question, but I believe it's not related. So maybe uh, I, I may ask another time. My question is just like, uh, like uh, the method uh, for like a Tai Chi method or full Oh, Tanguchi method. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Yes, because there yeah. are so many tools like you, but the specific tools, the like Pareto method, the Taguchi method, there are uh, fish, Ishikawa method. So those, uh, it has specific um, purpose, eh? but uh, K-chart so far uh, is the most comprehensive um, planning for planning and management for research. Okay, so actually you can use many other tools to help you to, to generate result, to analyze result, find the, the root cause, finding uh, the real problem, okay? Of course, if you just say uh, Kecha is the ultimate one, uh, just forget the rest. It's not true, eh? It's just uh, a tool that is going to complement. As I said just now, it is going to complement the existing tools so that it complete the uh, ecosystem in a structured manner. There are rules. Eh? You cannot just simply. Oh, I want to just focus on the uh, on the performance parameters. I do. I just uh, will do later in term of the literature review. Just focus on the result. Do experiment first. So you can do that, but it will take longer time. Okay. So uh, that's why I, I call this as a best practice. You do step by step. Okay. Again. Okay. Okay, okay. Visna, very quiet. Um, actually, uh, K Chat have answered my big question on how Ooh. to find the scope of my study. Actually, because I started uh, collecting a lot of literature reviews, mm -hmm. um, articles, patterns, and journals. So now I know uh, how to uh, how to class it. Yeah, and um, actually, I'm doing uh, the key chart now. I try to think. <laughs> okay. I started. Um, now I have two layers already. Right. Okay. That's good. So I would like all of you to try. Eh? So you just with this with the short uh, uh, presentation just now with the limited information. We haven't gone through the steps one, two, three, four, and five yet. But you have some general ideas already. So just throw your ideas first and later when we go through uh, the, the steps, okay, you may correct it along the way. Okay, actually if we have a face-to-face -face, uh, class, uh, we do have activities eh? uh, where you sit together, you do the activities, you show me your K chart, but maybe we can also do that uh, by by having uh, everybody can start sharing their K chart later on. All right. Okay, with that, uh, we can end our class. Probably Papati have some preparation for tomorrow. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Happy Diwali to Papati and family. Right? Thank you. As well as Agindra. Eh? So, Thank you, sir. Okay, Happy Diwali. Have a nice day. Thank you very much and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.